earlier review of the Slavia and that was the pair of 1 litres. Today we bring you the enthusiast's car, the 1.5 litres, both manual and petrol and you can see that I am smiling while winding this round corners and it truly is an enjoyable car to drive. Skoda are offering the Slavia 1.5 TSI only in a top-end variant and are clearly aiming this at those that want performance. Performance is on tap, it whisks you to triple digit speeds really, really easily and it is very, very quick. First up, I'm driving the 7-speed DSG. While we did not get a chance to put our V-Box on the 1.5 automatic, we did on the manual. Trust me, the 100 comes up really quick and I will tell you just how quick later in the story, so stay tuned to the end. But for now, What's nice about the 7-speed DSG is that the ratios are spread better, so power is more accessible. And for someone who wants performance and the ease of driving, well, this one is it. And if you want that little pleasure of manual at any given point of time, you always have the paddles. Just one dab on them, and you get a quick shift. The shifts are smooth and they come quick enough even in auto mode. Also, this DSG works well to ensure that you're not left working the gears in city traffic to bring up the power. Because the engine does need to get past the 1800 RPM mark to really get going. Now, enthusiasts will enjoy this car not only because of the performance, but because of the way it goes around corners. Yeah, handling of this car is really good too. It gives you a great amount of confidence. It's got good amounts of grip. There is a small amount of roll, but the Slavia always feel glued to the road and you can chuck it around corners with confidence. Although I have to say that the handling of its 1-litre sibling is a little bit better because it's more agile, it, the nose is lighter, so it darts into corners much better. Still, if we're looking at the segment, this would pretty much beat anything else. So it is truly an enthusiast sedan. If you're looking for something that's exciting in the sedan segment, well then this is it most definitely. But for those who love driving, they would probably want a manual, right? So let's move to that. Now the manual is the one that purists will enjoy, like me. Yes, I love feeling more connected to the car. And it is putting a big smile on my face. This engine is just so enjoyable. It loves to be revved. It goes all the way to 6,500 RPM. It just gets up to speed so, so quickly. Yeah, it's putting a big grin on my face. I'm loving this performance. This manual does an under 10 seconds, 0 to 100, and that is quick. In our initial test, the 100 came up in a very rapid 9.42 seconds. And yes, if most of you are wondering how it does in comparison with the city, well, let's take a look. The Slavia just slays the Honda City in terms of performance. And out on the road, you can often forget how quick you're going because it comes so easy. Yep, you can see I keep getting up to the speed limit and I keep having to slow down because it just breathes so easily. But the thing is, this manual is really tall geared. And I'll show you what I mean if I put it into second. Yep. It'll go all the way to 6,500 RPM and 100. You can pull up to 100 kilometers an hour in second gear and in third, almost to 150 kilometers an hour. So that is huge. So you really need a lot of space to extract the max in this manual. Now, while the manual is fun and very engaging to drive, with the tall gearing and the slight lag below 1800 RPM, you will be kept working the gears a lot for your everyday driving. And the places to really enjoy the manual would be far and few between. The DSG makes better use of the ratios and it doesn't really take anything away from the performance. And with the paddle shifters, it can be as much fun to drive. 
Now you've seen both our reviews, the 1 litre and the 1.5 litre, and I think the Skoda Slavia is all set to shake up the segment. To begin with, it is a really sexy looking sedan. So yes, it is going to turn heads in the segment, but it goes deeper than that. It's not just the looks. I think first off, if you're really confused between an SUV and a sedan, this is one sedan you can really look at because it's got ground clearance to pretty much take it over quite a bit of rough stuff and compete with some of the SUVs in the segment. So I think that's one fear you can knock out. And besides that, you get a great choice of variants. You've got the one liter with manual and auto. You've got the 1.5 with a manual and a seven speed DSG. So you have a wide choice of variants to pick from. But it's not just that. You get it all packaged with comfort, space, a large size boot, good quality interiors, and it comes packed with features too. Now, the 1.5 is for the true enthusiast who really enjoys performance but you will have to pay a hefty price for that performance. The one liter is the more practical option. It may be on the pricier side of the segment, but it is worth it.